Hi everyone and welcome to today's video session. I'm still Thomas and I'm still one of the IELTS teachers here at Lango Learning System. These online video sessions will help you improve a certain aspect of one of the marking criteria for your IELTS exam, in today's case, writing. We're going to look at some common mistakes in IELTS writing part two. Forcing vocabulary. During the preparation time for your IELTS test, a lot of students tend to accumulate as many words as possible. This way of learning can often lead to some basic mistakes. Students try to take the academic words into the writing, but ignore the proper usage of words in terms of grammar or syntax. Having a wide vocabulary is important in achieving a high score in the test. However, you shouldn't try to put complex words in your essay just for the sake of it. If your usage isn't secure, it can lead to some syntax errors which can lower your score. So you should improve your vocabulary by reading magazines or blogs, and when doing so, note down the meaning, examples and collocations, as well as noting down the definition. Then regular practice will make it more likely that you will commit the language to your long-term memory. Small grammar mistakes. Almost all candidates have a good command of English grammar, but in the stressful situation of the test room, you can easily make some minor mistakes. It's hard to get a high band score if every sentence has one or more grammar errors. Some popular mistakes that candidates often make are using articles incorrectly, using the incorrect form of a noun and subject verb agreement. When practicing writing, you should have a teacher or correcting tools to help you spot mistakes and improve your essays. Normally, each student has some identifying frequently made mistakes, which if identified and corrected, can lead to a much stronger piece of writing. You should be in the habit of proofreading your essay after finishing anyway. Overusing cohesive devices. The cohesive device is a tool to connect your ideas and is known by some of the following words. Therefore, besides, because and despite. But students sometimes abuse these terms in their essays in a way that neither strengthens their writing or enhances the flow. And because they use too many linkers which interrupt the rhythm of their sentence. Have a look at an example band eight or nine essay. And these candidates use cohesive devices much more rarely than you'd think. Cohesive devices are words like for instance and to conclude, despite this and in addition. They tell the reader what we're doing in a sentence and they indicate the relationships between the different clauses, sentences and paragraphs. You shouldn't begin every sentence with a cohesive device, just use them when needed to make your essay more coherent. It'll make it hang together a little more. Not addressing both parts of the question equally. Many of the task 2 questions are split into two parts. For example, you can ask to be discussed both views, discuss the advantages and disadvantages, or discuss the problems and solutions of something. If you just analyse one half without focusing on the other, you cannot adequately fulfil the requirements of the task. Sometimes you also have to handle double questions, like the one here. Large businesses have big budgets for marketing and promotion, and as a result, people gravitate towards buying their products. What problems does this cause? And what could be done to encourage people to buy local products? Apparently, this prompt has indicated two separate questions to ask students to write about. However, many students would only focus on the first question and pay less attention to answering the second one, which accounts for 50% of the fulfilment criteria. To avoid this mistake, you should make a concrete outline before digging into the requirements of the question. Writing about the topic, not the question. One common mistake is that a student just writes about the main topic indicated in the prompt, but misses out the point which asks them to answer. Regardless of your excellent command of grammar and your fantastic writing style, you'll still lose marks if you don't address and tackle the specific question being asked. Let's look at another example question. Computers are being used more and more in education, and there will soon be no role for the teacher in education. To what extent do you agree or disagree? Take this question as an example. Generally, the question requires you to discuss how computers have affected the role of teachers nowadays. Many students just write about the role of computers in the education system, but they don't respond to the main question about how computers affect teachers' role in the classroom, and they express their own opinion about the situation. Remember, the examiner is not looking for your knowledge about the general topic, education here, but they want to test your ability to answer specific questions stated in the prompt using accurate and precise language. 
not developing ideas. We frequently call this type of writing a shotgun approach. It means that you write out a list of ideas that come into your mind. If the question asks you to write about the pros and cons of a problem, you will tend to list five pros and five cons. It seems that you really meet the requirements, but it also raises one problem that can lower your score. The problem is that you do not support your ideas by evidence and examples, but rather they're just presented almost at random. I really hope that you found this session helpful in preparing you for your IELTS test. If you'd like to sign up for a course here at Lango, please click on the link below. Our courses are designed to cater to your individual needs and to provide you with personalised learning pathways. Remember to like and subscribe and do not forget to hit that bell button to get notifications of the latest uploads. I've been Thomas at Lango Learning System and I'd love to see you for the next session. Bye! Oh,